start exactly? You know, when I was an anger woman in Baltimore, I had an assignment to cover the behind-the-scenes goings-on at All My Children, and while I was there, the producers offered me a part on the show. I was so excited because I watched the show every single day, no matter where I was, since college, and I figured that once they saw me on camera, soap, stardom, here I come. I thought I could be Erica's best friend or have a hot, steamy romance with Tad, you know, the first kind of interracial love in Pine Valley. But what happens? I get six lousy words. Six. What was I supposed to do with that? Of course, Agnes, you could ask me to guest star on the show now, but sorry, I'm sort of busy. Oh, and Agnes, coincidentally, on tomorrow's Oprah, we're doing a show on soap opera creators who forget their friends. Seriously, you did open the doors for daytime TV to discuss and tackle serious and important issues. And for that, many of us in the talk show arena owe you a debt of thanks. So congratulations, Miss Agnes, on this very special honor. You truly deserve it. Daytime fans still come up and want to talk about Karen Woolrick. And in one life, Agnes, you created one amazing and inspiring show. I'm so honored to be a part of that program's fine history. And I'm equally honored to say to you, thank you for your contributions to daytime and continued success in your life. You deserve it. You are our heart and our soul, as well as our life force. Congratulations. Agnes, I'm so honored to be a part of your special tribute tonight. Uh, well, for one thing, it gives me the chance to tell you something that I've wanted to say to you for many, many years. How in heaven's name could you kill off Jenny? I'm still sick. I loved her. What were you thinking? Did you snap? I mean, I haven't stopped crying since 1984. And if you think I suffered, just imagine poor Greg. I mean, it, it, it can't be easy watching your wife blow up on a jet ski. I'm all right now. It, uh, it gives me great pleasure to say congratulations, Agnes, on your very well-deserved award. And as all my children's number one fan, what else can I say? But I forgive you, and I'm so very glad we had this time together. <laughs> personal note about Agnes. Agnes has been entertaining and informing, enchanting and ensnaring audiences for quite some time now. Agnes, in the words of Cole Porter, you got that thing. And the song goes on to say, you got that thing that makes birds forget to sing. Oh, you got that thing all right. That thing that makes people schedule their classes and their work, their vacations, the birth of their babies, their entire lives around watching your shows. Now, if I were smart, I'd leave it at that, right? I mean, if Cole Porter couldn't come up with a lyric that more fully described the magic that certain people have that sets them apart from all others, well, who am I? But so many people stop me, and they ask me, what is Agnes Nixon really like? Tell me about Agnes Nixon. So I'll try. Oh, there is magic, all right. There's magic in the lady herself and magic in her writing. I think that Agnes Nixon actually works on, on an additional wavelength. I mean, how else can we explain all those incredible stories that she writes months and months before they ever appear in the headlines of our newspapers? And on a personal note, it was Agnes Nixon who predicted the birth of my first baby in real life. She predicted the exact month, the exact day, and that that baby would be a girl. She did this on her Ouija board, and I wasn't even pregnant yet. <laughs> well, in addition to Agnes's obvious intelligence and extremely hard work, and I mean ongoing, hands-on, creative hard work, there is her legendary sense of humor. Everyone who has ever worked with Agnes talks about it. You only have to be in her presence for five minutes to know it yourself. And besides, it shows. It shows in her writing. It's one of the things her audiences loves best about her. And it shows in the gleam in her eyes. It shines from her beautiful blue-eyed blonde face. And something I think would surprise a lot of people, because Agnes is such an enormous presence in this industry and has achieved such greatness. She is a perfect size four. 
I mean, I'm guessing maybe it's a perfect size, too. But in any case, Agnes Nixon has more style in her little finger than most of us could ever hope to have in our entire beings in our entire lifetimes. Agnes, I want your clothes. <laughs> Finally, there's one more thing that I'd like to say about Agnes. It's a word that isn't heard very often. Agnes has grace. Grace in the way she walks, grace in the way she talks, grace in the way she deals with the enormous demands of her career, grace in the way she keeps her family close, grace under pressure, grace in the way she writes her stories, how she weaves and interweaves her plots. Agnes, on behalf of everyone at home watching you tonight and every day, and on behalf of all of us in this room tonight, especially those of us who have been lucky enough to be handed one of your timely and timeless scripts. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Agnes Nixon. So, Susan, boy, what a send-up, mm. <laughs> right? I, and thank you, Susan, for everything you've done. We've done together for 26 years now. It's just, it's been great, and uh, I thank... How much time do I have? <laughs> Very little, right? <laughs> um, I thank particularly Lynn Leahy and all the staff of Soap Opera Digest for this really, truly great honor but if it's a lifetime achievement it's the achievement of many lifetimes of many people in front of the camera and behind the camera at the networks who and my own family whom i know time won't permit my mentioning all their names but i couldn't have done any of it without you certainly not my family and as we say on our show, this is for you kids, really. And there are a few people who, have, who are no longer with us, much to all our regret, whom I would like to name. The mother of us all, Erna Phillips. Uh, that wonderful radio and television producer who taught me so much, Walter Gorman. That wonderful television couple, Ted and Betty Corday. Those wonderful writers and human beings, Gordon Russell and Douglas Marlin. And our th the three wonderful beloved actors on All My Children who have gone on, Kay Campbell, who was known as Grandma Kate, uh, Hugh Franklin as Dr. Charles Tyler, and the ineffable Fra Heflin as er Mona Kane Tyler, Erica's mother. And I've been warned that I don't have much time, so in the very brief moments that are left, I would like to thank a segment of our daytime world that I don't think gets heralded nearly enough and that's our audience if you people think we don't appreciate you you're wrong we know it's because you're there that we're here we love getting your letters because even if we can't answer them because we do 200 each show does 260 episodes a year so we stay pretty busy but we read every one we get from you and e even the ones that aren't so complimentary because we know you care and you keep us on our toes and it, it will always be a source of pride to us 
that you're there, that you care for us. And I think all of us here today, kids, should get up and thank our audience out there. Tell them how much they mean to us. of the great immortal Ralph Cramden audience, you're the greatest. And tune in tomorrow. God bless us, everyone. Just ahead, Pete Hamilton Cobb.